said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it shall suffice us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and ye has, and ye has thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest then, show us the Father? Believest thou, believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwell in me. He doeth the works. Yes. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, yes. or believe else me for the very works' sake. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe on me, the works that I do shall he do also, yes. and yes. greater works than these shall he do, yes. because I go unto my Father, yes. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And ye, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Pastor, I knew you was going to ask me to pray because the Spirit told me this morning, which is funny. I was prepared to pray today. So, all heads bow, all hearts open and minds clear. Dear precious and heavenly gracious Father, we come to you this morning, first and foremost, asking for your forgiveness, Lord. We ask you that you forgive us for the sins that we committed, Lord, that we knew about and the ones that we did not know about, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your grace and your mercy on this morning, Heavenly Father. Now we just come to you to lift you up and give your name all the praise and the glory that you are due today, Father. We thank you in advance for the blessings that are to come, Lord. We come to you today with an expectant spirit, Lord. We thank you for this 45-day fast that we are in the midst of, Heavenly Father, because we know that you have a great work for us at the end of this fast, Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to sustain us, Heavenly Father. Continue to hold us up as temptation comes our way, Lord. We ask that you lift heavy hearts on today, Lord. We ask that you continue to meet the needs of your people, Heavenly Father. 
we thank you for your son Jesus whose blood was shed for us Heavenly Father we thank you for the hedge that you have built around us to continue to keep us safe Heavenly Father keep us safe Heavenly Father we thank you Lord we just thank you we thank your mighty name Lord we thank you for your grace and your mercy continue grace and mercy Heavenly Father a renewed grace and mercy each and every day Lord we ask that you continue to keep us safe and continue to keep our children safe Lord for any hurt harm or danger that might try to come their way Heavenly Father we ask that you clear our children's minds as they go to school this week Heavenly Father keep their minds stayed on you Lord for we know school is not what it used to be, Lord. So we ask that you lift them up and you keep them as they walk to and from school, as they are driven to and from school, Lord. We ask that you just continue to wrap your love and arms around them, Lord, and let them know that they can do all things through you, Heavenly Father. That is not no task that they cannot complete, Lord. That with your guidance and that with your help, Lord, that they are to they are able to do all things, Lord. I, we ask that you touch the parents on today, Lord. Show them the right way to raise their children, Heavenly Father. Show them and guide them that they will raise their children up with love, Lord, discipline, the way that you would have them to go, Heavenly Father, so that when they are gone from home, that they will not stray or turn away from the ways that you have taught them, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. I had 2,000 tongues, Lord. We couldn't thank you enough for the things that you have given us. The love that you shared for us, Lord. We thank you for that today, Now, Lord, we come to you binding up anything that the enemy might try to throw at us this week, Lord, as we go through this fast. And that you recognize our hard works, Heavenly Father. That we're, we're trying to shed away the old things, Lord. That the old things are passed away. And that we become new creatures in you, Lord, at the end of this fast. We want to give you the glory, Lord. That you remove us so that people can see you and give you all the honor and praise, Lord. Let our light so shine that people will come running to, to the church to say, what do I need to do to get this close to the Lord, Heavenly God? You just remove and peel all the dirt, the grime away from us, Lord, that they can just see pure souls and pure hearts, Lord. We ask that you continue to lift up our shepherd of this house, Heavenly Father. Continue to give him the strength to lead us, Lord. Lord, to lead us in the path of righteousness so that we can just do your will, Heavenly Father. Have your way in this house today, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit pour and rain down on us, Lord, that we will be filled up so when we go out, we, other people can feel our overflowing today, Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to lift up his wife as she stands behind this man of God, Heavenly Father. We ask that you lift up his children. Just give them strength, Lord. Just give them strength on today. These things we ask in your precious son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
what you came to do, hallelujah. And the men choir came to praise him, I 
don't know that. I can't respect it. So excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sorry for making you feel uncomfortable. But I was told, seek ye. I'm sorry. Excuse me.
you. The church that's showing up don't care. We came to praise the Lord. Know what you heard. This to get it in, church, y'all. Let's believe we're going to get in. Slaves, you know, you just run on. <laughs> you hear that organ, you just want to go if you're a believer. Well, you don't stop. Try to, try to go. Try to stop it. See, she's the best. Y'all ain't cut it out. Y'all keep going. Y'all provoke him. Hallelujah. He's so good. Hallelujah.
The Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lemons was wearing me out. And he's almost like picking with a sword that's trying to heal. I'm trying to stop it. He keeps aggravating me, so that's what I'm working with. He, he, he said, you know the Lord is good if you got options. If you got options. I had options. I was trying to figure out what I was going to wear this morning. I got so many options. What shoes I want to wear, I got so many options. What I want to eat, I got so many options. And if it, if it ain't at the house, I can go buy it. You, you can't tell me the Lord ain't good to you. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad I'm saved. And I got out. so much for today it's the men just blessed me and man they, they over there trying to do it and they did their thing <laughs> sister thomas won't you stand happy 50th birthday She had a beautiful her husband surprised her the other night. And uh, she thought she was going to Florida. She was all dressed and ready. She had a little flip-flops on and little sunglasses. She's looking real cute. And man, wasn't none of that Florida, but all her friends came in from Arizona and California and everywhere her, her kindergarten friends and they just came to salute her and tell her happy 50th. And it was a beautiful occasion. Amen. And uh, just thank God for her and for her family and for the love that she has for this church and this church family. We love you and we salute you 50 more plus. Listen, I'm not going to blame the time because I know it's the holiday weekend. A lot of y'all want to go home and start grilling or whatever. And, and uh, <laughs> all right, I have an altar call. We can have foot washing service. I'm going to have a service. We got a late night musical. Come on, let's go. Uh, <laughs> amen. We, uh, we thank God for you. I, I pray that you, you, you be safe uh, this weekend. Amen. Let the Lord continue to use you and guide you. My, my brother is here, and I am so excited that he's here. I finally got him off Noel Jones' schedule and T.D. Jakes and George Myers and Jamal Bryan, Joel Osteen, and Preflo Dollar, and Jimmy Swagger, and the rest of them. And I got him here. He is the proud baby boy of Pastor Wallace and Deborah Mills. And I love him dearly. I love him. I pick with him. We fight on Facebook all the time. I'm back and forth. I pray to God, save him. For real. Fill him with the Holy Ghost. Amen. But I love him. And I, I affectionately want him to know that I love him. I love his... He knows I love his family. I love his dad, his mom. They're always kind to me and to my family, and I appreciate him for uh, stepping over this way because I asked him to come about three years ago and he found the man. Amen. Amen. And you can't fight me, this is my church, right? You can't fight. You can fight later on Facebook. Amen. But, but won't you receive him? He is anointed. He is called. Amen. He can preach. I was impressed. I'm going to say about seven years ago, he did a revival for Elington Baptist Church outside. That's when I first found out who he was. I knew his dad, but I didn't know him. 
And he did a youth revival outside under the tent at Leland for five days. And amen. this young man blessed my heart the very first night. Amen. And I've been uh, a fan of the word of God that's in him Amen. ever since. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thank God. I pray that you pray for him as he comes and gives us the word of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, won't you stand with me and call his name Reverend Mills. Preach in Jesus' name. Why is standing? Sing a verse of this hymn with me. Pass me not, O oh, gentle saint, Lord, and hear my heart, O oh, cry, O oh, strength allow you to move around a bit, put some clothes on your back, you're looking fancy, huh? He put, put some shoes on your feet, allows you to be able to walk around a little bit. He made you put a key in the car and start the engine in the car, started with somebody else's video. You got down on the freeway, somebody didn't make it to the freeway, they kind of didn't move from in front of their house. Somebody got moving and hit another car, never made it out of their driveway, but look at you now. It's the people that wish they could be here, that was praying that they could be here, but the Lord brought you here one more. Somebody just ought to tell the Lord thank you right now for what he's already done. For what he's already done. Giving honor to God who is the head of my life, to our Lord and Savior Jesus who is our risen Christ, to the Holy Spirit that dwells in this place, get happy seats, uh, to this great pastor, this, this great man of God, this my friend, my brother, beloved, I, I love him dearly. I, I just pray that one day God put his hand on him for real. Uh, your, your pastor is a brother of mine. We fuss back and forth uh, via Facebook, text message. I told him I was going to show y'all the messages when I was getting threatened. So, I figured, you know, that would just be between me and you. I'm not going to. 
Uh, but I thank you uh, for, for thinking enough of me to allow me to come and share with, uh, to you uh, this great body and band of believers. Uh, it's good to see you all one more time. Uh, it's good to see that you're all standing not only in your faith in God, but in the faith of your pastor. Amen. As he goes from pulpit to the organ and piano and back to the pulpit, he's moving. But I, I, tell, I tell you what, the Lord has given him great gifts. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. You have one of God's most gifted preacher pastors. And if nothing else, you ought to tell God, thank you for your pastor. Amen. Amen. To this great first lady and you. This great church family here at, at GE, as he told me. It's GE. It's a blessing to be here. My wife is here, and my daughter is here, and my niece is here. Amen. I thank God all the time that he allows us to first fellowship together. I tell folk it'd be some days I have to go and she can't go. There's some days that I have to go and she don't make it. So every time I can look out and see her face, I feel a little bit better. Amen, somebody. Listen, I'm soliciting your prayers and preaching. I, uh, you, you, you know, you have to pray. I, ha I had a message all set. It was all the, all the T's was crossed, all the I's were dotted, and I was ready. I was going to preach it. And was sitting there, and the Lord gave me this other scripture and, and uh, another message. So I, I'm, I'm praying. I'm praying that He completes what I don't. Amen. I want to look at the scripture, the New Testament passage of scripture, the gospel according to St. Luke. Yeah. Oh. Look at the fourth chapter of St. Luke. I'm going to give you a couple of different translations, but I'm going to read King James for your hearing. Yeah. Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. I found this passage of scripture and it, it, it stuck in my spirit. And I'm praying that it moves the way to you that it did to me. Yeah. Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 29 and 30. When you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, say just a minute, preacher. I will wait on you. The Bible calls for us to all be on one accord in this place. Amen. amen. Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 29 and 30. The King James uh, Version reads this. And he rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, yes. that they may cast him down headlong. Mm -hmm. But he passing through the midst of them went his way. Peter says the Message Bible reads, that set everyone in the meeting place seething with anger. They threw him out, banishing him from the village. Then took him to a mountain cliff at the edge of the village, to throw him to his doom. Yeah. But he gave them the slip and was on his way. I just want to talk from this thought for a couple minutes. Set up, but slip down. All right. All right. Set, set up, but slip down. I, I'm soliciting, soliciting your prayers. My brothers and sisters, listen, we've all... Uh, have been set up All right. by somebody yes. at some point in time. Uh, it does not matter how holy you think you are, but somebody at some point has tried to set you up. Yes, sir. It could have been on your job. It could have been in the old neighborhood. It could have been in your own home. But I guarantee you that at some point, whether you know it or not, somebody has set you up. Yes, yeah. What I like about that is, regardless of who it was, where it was, or how it was, the Lord gave you a way to slip out. Luke's, Luke's gospel is, it is unique in its context and its writing because... It's written by the only Gentile author in the New Testament. Luke, 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 Luke who is a physician by trade, he is an educated Greek man, pays uh, attention to great details in the text. He, 
kind of like the other Gospels, he annotates some of the same miracles, but Luke uh, pays more attention uh, to the miracles that Christ did. He, he, he did not pay so much attention to the teachings of Christ, but he looked more closely at the deeds, at, at the acts, at the evidence, at, at what Christ actually done. And, uh, more than what he said. Luke, 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 Luke paid attention because, uh, again, he was a doctor by trade. He, he, he went to school and learned the human anatomy. He learned how everything in your body functions and operates. And Luke becomes confused because this Jesus fellow was doing things to the human body that he couldn't do. All right now, all right. You got to understand where he was. There weren't that many people there. I'm, I'm pretty positive it was not a whole lot of great physicians and doctors. And, and, and a lot of the people in the scripture uh, that Jesus healed, Luke probably saw. Yeah. And, and told them those words that we hate to hear. There's nothing more that I can do. And, and, and you find throughout the scripture text that, that, that Luke may have told somebody it's nothing I can do. But Jesus comes along. And changes what Luke couldn't do. You, you all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Uh, there's a story in the Bible about a man named Jairus and his daughter. Uh, the Bible says that, that Jairus comes to Jesus because his daughter could not get there. And, and while Jairus was pleading his case because he already knew what was going on with Jairus' daughter, the Bible said that, the, that Jesus told uh, uh, Jairus to go ahead home. Yeah. Everything was already taken care of. And, and the scripture said when they got to the house, when he called the little girl forth, they were laughing, standing outside the door because they thought this man had lost his mind. And the Bible said when the girl came out, yes. everybody was confused, including Luke. The, 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 the scripture goes on to say that this same woman, while, while, while Jairus was dealing with Jesus, that it was a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years. Now watch the, the similarity because uh, the Bible says that the little girl his daughter was 12 years old. And, and here we have, uh, here we have the same woman with the issue of blood for 12 long years. All right, all right. And the text goes on to say that she has spent all that she had yes. trying to heal her condition. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to use my imagination, but, but, but I'm thinking that she's been by Luke's office. I'm, yes. I'm going to assume that she went to see Luke. I'm assuming that he gave her every prescription that he had and nothing worked. Yeah. But the Bible says that all she had to do was force her way through the crowd and touch. Yeah. I, I, I was intrigued by that scripture because the Bible said that she just touched the hymn. Yeah. People don't understand, you know, we wear hymns and cuffs uh, in our clothes and our suits and our dresses. But uh, back in the day, they wore hymns on the bottom of their robe to catch whatever spilled. And you have to understand that the power that Jesus had was so powerful that you didn't have to get to him. All you had to do was get to the cup. Can, can I say something in here? You might want to get close enough to your pastor to catch some of what falls off of him that lands in his cup so that you can get some of the blessing. That he has. Listen, the, the, the Luke, Luke, Luke talks about. He, he talks about in his in his in his writing the acts and actions of Christ. He talks about Jesus being tempted after he spent forty days in the wilderness. It, he, he talks about how Satan tried to set Jesus up. Yeah. I, I laugh because I looked at this scripture text. I'm trying to figure out how Satan gonna try to tempt Jesus with what Jesus made. Yeah. Shows him, takes him up to the cliff, lets him look overseas all the kingdoms of the world and says, all of this can be yours if you just bow. Oh. Why, why am I going to bow down to get what's already mine? Y'all missing that, ain't you? There is some people in here that's been set up by some individuals to get back what's already yours. Oh man, I thought I would get an amen on that one. There is some individuals who've been set up by some folk that's close to you. Man, all you gotta do is do this and I got you, man. I'm gonna give you this. This is the same $20 I owe you. Why would I turn around and borrow back the same $20? Oh, that's 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 so some of us are being set up to get some of the same stuff that's already ours. Luke, 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 Luke. Luke, Luke talks about, he, he, he talks about how, how, how when Jesus came through Capernaum, how was a man who was there uh, uh, that was sitting there demon-possessed. Yeah. 
what, what was so powerful about that passage of scripture is because even in the midst of him having all the demons, he knew who God was. Yes. Yes. The text says that they were sitting in the church. Yes. When Jesus stops by in the temple, the Bible says that the demon-possessed man cries out and said, Jesus of Nazareth, what are you doing here? Let us alone. Yeah. He said, because I know you're only here to destroy us. Yeah. What you have to understand is that, first off, there's some demons in the church. Yeah. There is some people here who didn't come here to say amen. They didn't come to receive the presence and power of God. Some of them just came to raise holy yeah. Uh, but the Bible says that when Jesus shows up, even in the midst of the demons, the demon had to get himself under control and acknowledge who Jesus really was. Listen, this scripture in Luke chapter 4 uh, talks about Jesus uh, returning from Jordan. And the Spirit says that he had been led in the wilderness, he had been tempted. And it says he comes through the city, walking through. Galilee, and, and, and the scripture says that he comes to the synagogue. Yeah. The text says that, that he gets to the synagogue, and while he's in the synagogue, he begins to teach those who were there on the Sabbath, and, and the Bible says that they were astonished and amazed. Yeah. They said because he came, they didn't know who he was, but what he had to say came with such power and authority that they were amazed. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. But the Bible said that, that, that it was some of them there who were angry. Yes. They, 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 they were angry. They, they were angry. Why, why, why were they angry? Because they had position in the church. They, they were the ones who were used to being the ones who told everybody what to do. They were the ones who taught and preached to everybody. And here we are having a stranger in our midst who comes to tell us something and change your mind on what I've been telling you all these years. And the Bible said they were amazed at the authority yeah. Yeah. of what he said. Scripture says those who got angry got the mob together and, and say he's no good for us. We're going to get him out of the temple. Now, now, now this, this kind of got me confused because, because how you going to get Jesus out of his own house? So, some of us are in trouble right now. There's some churches all over our city, all over our state, all over our country that are in trouble because they put Jesus out of his own house. You have to understand, regardless of what church you go to, whether it be New Ebenezer, whether it be Greater Emmanuel, the end of that title says church. And church means that you are affiliated as a believer in Christ, meaning you are in his house. How dare you put him out of his own? Out of his own house. Let me, let, let me get to the text. The scripture says, the scripture says that they were angry. And they banished him not only out of the church, but out of the village. Well, our city is in trouble because we've got so far away from God, we pushed him not only out of our homes, not only out of our churches, but we pushed him out of our village. Yes. And we wonder why our city is going to a burning, fiery hell yes. because we have no Jesus where we live. Yes. Yes. Bible says, Bible says that the mob got together and said they assembled one another and they took him not only out of the church, banished him from the village, and then they took him to a mountaintop yeah. on the edge of the city, and they had set up to push him to that point so that they can throw him over. Yeah. But the text goes on to say that he gave them the slip, yeah. <laughs> and he was on his way. Listen, it's a few reasons why, uh, why individuals want to set you up. The first one is that some folk just don't like you. It does not matter how nice you are, how much you smile. It does not matter how much you try to give to other people and do for other folk. I've come to the realization that regardless of how Mr. Nice Guy you are or Miss Nice Woman you are, that some folk just don't like you. It does not matter who you are, what job you perform, that some people are just not pleased with your appearance. That they're, they're not pleased with your presence. They are not pleased with who you are. Maybe you just don't talk the way that they want you to talk. Maybe you don't walk the way that they thought you should. Maybe you just didn't wear the color that they wanted you to wear today. But baby, it's some people that just do not like you. I remember we was in school some years ago and, and when we got ready to graduate, they did all these mock elections and, and we had what was called most popular. Had a most popular man and, and the most popular girl. And, and it's funny because when we got the yearbook and we looked through 
and we were laughing towards the end of the school year, said, man, they were the most popular, and, and this is the most popular girl, and half the people in the school said, I don't even like them. <laughs> it does not matter how popular you are, it's some folk that just do not like you. Another reason that people try to set you up is some folk want to be where you are. They don't, they, they don't understand what it took for you to get to where you are, but they see where you are. And some people are willing to do anything, including set you up to get what you got. They don't, they don't understand how you struggle every month to pay every bill that you have. They don't understand that you struggle to pay your bill just like they struggle to pay their bills. All they see is your suit is three pieces, and they're just two baby. They want to be where you are. They want to have what you have. They want to do what you do. Some, 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 folk, some folks see, some folks see uh, who we are. They don't realize that what we have is because we bless my God. They don't understand that what we have is because we pay our tithes and our offering. They don't understand that the reason that we ain't crying when we ought to be is because we're blessed. They just want what we they, they just want what we have. They don't, they, they don't understand there's a struggle behind this story. They, they don't understand the nights we have to cry like they have to cry. They don't, they don't understand how we have to walk the floor and weep and moan like they have to walk the floor and weep and moan. All they know is on Sunday morning you show up in your Sunday best and you smile and wave in your hands and clap and praise God. All they know is you doing something that they not and they mad. You know, you know, you know, Pastor, I'm, I'm so happy that I have a pastor who's real with us. You know, he, he, he's letting us in on some secrets and stuff that he's had to deal with. And we laughed because I told him one time, I said, I said, Daddy, I'm telling you, when I get older, man, I want to be just like you. He said, no, you don't really want to be like me. I want you to be better than what I am. But you don't want to be like me because I don't want you to go through what I had to go through to get to where I am. I said, Daddy, but I see you every Sunday. You come in, man, you sugar shop. Every Sunday, man, I want to dress how you dress. He said, yeah, but it was some times I only had two good suits. One of them was black and one of them was blue. I had four shirts that I had to press, iron and wash every week. I had five or six good times that I can interact with one with another. He said, you don't want to go through what I yeah. So Some people don't understand because they see you now, but they don't know how you got to your... Now. Then, then sometimes, uh, sometime, my brothers and sisters, you have to understand that you were set up because some people want to get something out of it. Can I, can I tell you a story and get back to text? You know, the Bible talks about a man by the name of Judas, who was one of the chosen 12 of God's disciples. And the Bible says that, that the government told him, we give you 30 good pieces of silver. Now, now the bad thing about it is Judas hung around with Jesus quite often. He was one of the chosen 12. He was there from the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He walked with him closely every day. He talked with him closely every day. He sat at his feet and learned from him. And I guarantee you, if he didn't have no money to pay his bill, all he had to do was ask the master. Yes. Yes. But the Bible says that he sold him out. Sold him out. 30 pieces of silver. Yes. Scripture say he couldn't even live with himself after they came and got him. He had to go hang himself yes. from the tree in the wilderness. Some people will set you up to get something out of your downfall. You know, you ever heard that scenario? They talk about crabs in a barrel. You put a bunch of crabs in a barrel, all of them want to get out, and they will pull one down to get to the top. Once they start climbing another pull that one down, we are living in a dog eat dog, crab in a barrel mentality. Where they trying to get just a little something. They think they're going to get a little bit further than you. They think they're going to go a little bit farther than you and they're pulling you down. To get something out of it. Can I tell you something? Don't you understand if we learn to work together we can all have something? If we all start to work together and put all that a little bit together, we can do more with that a little bit than one person with a whole lot and everybody else. With nothing. That's fine. Then lastly, brothers and sisters, you have to realize that sometimes you were set up for God glory. to get the glory. Yes, to understand what I'm saying, you have to understand who sent you up. We have, we have the enemy who will sometimes set us up. He will, he will come in and present you with exactly he, what he knows that you're like. He'll put Miss It or Mr. It in your face and he'll set him up, make it look real good, make it look like you won't get away with everything that you're trying to do. He will set you up, baby, put you right in the face.
face of what you think is your dream girl and dream man for it to all blow up in your face. You can be set up by the enemy. Then you can be set up by the haters. Tell, tell your neighbor, there's some haters in the building. It's some, it's some haters in the building. You have, you have to understand that, that, that regardless of who you are and where you are, there's always a hater somewhere. Went to work and regardless of how cool you trying to be with somebody or everybody, it's always that one cut their eyes at you, give you, give you that dirty look. You know, when I was in the street, I used to call it mean money. You know, always that one of the corner who just look at you, kind of grip their face at you. It's always a girl who roll her neck, roll her eyes at you. You ain't even did nothing to them. You just say, Hi, how you doing? Go to your desk, do your good job. And every time you look at them, they looking at you. The way that it's supposed to go, and it's always that one just sitting there ain't really saying nothing, they ain't really clap their hands since they came in the building. It's always that one just sitting there acting like looking around, just trying to see who gonna do what. And no sooner the service over, you say, "Baby, we had some good stuff." Did you see what Sister So and So had? You be like, "Man, the pastor really preached." Oh, man, he be playing, he be playing. He don't even be serious. You be like, "Man, the choir was really jazz. They was all." They wouldn't even say the song right. They forgot the words. Let me tell you something. There is no man, no woman, no quiet, no auxiliary that is perfect. We gonna forget the words sometime. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be some days when we ain't on our A game. But baby, your job ain't to hate me. Your job is to lift me up. that you're being set up. Not only will he show you who is setting you up, but the Lord will also give you an escape route. The Bible says, Luke chapter 4 says that the people had set him up and pushed him out of the temple. And it took Sam, they took him to the edge of the village. And, and they took him to the cliff. But they were going to push him over the cliff. But one translation of scripture says, in the midst of their confusion, <coughs> that he slipped through the crowd yes, and went about his way. Don't you understand that in the midst of a setup, when you're trying to do bad to the child of God, Watch out, right? that the Lord will always throw some confusion yeah. in the midst of the setup yeah. Yeah. and allow you to get out of the way of harm. Genesis tells us of a story about the man, of the story of a man by the name of Joseph, yes, who was loved by his daddy and was given the coat and given some yes. dreams revealed to him by God. And the scripture said that his brothers set him up, yes, threw him, and in addition then sold him off yes. to the traveler who came by. Yes. But the text goes on to say that the Lord showed him a dream. Yes, and in the dream, the sun and moon were bowing down to him, and he told his family 
Yeah, that they would eventually bow to him. The text says that even though they sent him up and they pushed him in the ditch, they sold him to whoever passed by, that he was accepted into the temple, into the kingdom, into the high priest, into the elders. And he became so high in his position that when his daddy came, <laughs> before his presence, because of the position that Joseph held, that his daddy had to bow. And eventually his brothers had to bow. Daniel chapter 3 talks about some Hebrew boys who, who decided in their mind that they were going to hold on to their faith in God. Nebuchadnezzar got mad at them and said, look here boys, the, the music has been sounded and everybody all over the kingdom went down on their knees. Yeah. Said, said, but they told me that you boys still didn't bow. Yeah. yeah. Scripture says that, that that he turned the furnace up seven times higher. Yeah. And said, I'm give you one more chance to get out of this, 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 this situation. Yeah. Say, all you have to do is bow. Yeah. <laughs> but the text says that when they got to Nebuchadnezzar, yeah. Yeah, they said the God we serve uh, is an able God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If He delivers us, He's able. Yeah. And if He does not deliver us, yeah, He's still able. Yeah. And either way, uh, we still won't bow. Yeah. The Bible says yeah, they were thrown in the furnace. Yeah. And Shadrach said, Well, uh, might as well turn hell uh, into a sanctuary. Yeah. He said, I Read the scripture. Yeah, 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 yeah. Meshach said, I'll sing the song. Yeah. Yeah. Bendigo said, Well, uh, I guess I'll say the prayer. Yeah, yeah. Shadrach said, Now nah, I lift up mine eyes yeah, yeah. to the hill uh, from which cometh my help. Yeah. All of my help uh, come uh, from the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Meshach said, uh, Father, I stretch. Yeah. He said he looked in and expected barbecue believers. And when he looked in, what should have been three was now four. And they were marching around in the midst of the furnace. And they came out with not even a scent of smoke. The Bible said he had to open the door and let the boys out. What I'm trying to tell you is sometime he will give you an escape.
see it. When you didn't think it was a way out. When you had been set up so bad that your back was against the wall. You didn't see a way out of it. You didn't see a way through it. But the word said that he told you to do like Hezekiah and just turn your face. To the midst of the wall. And when you're at the wall, you cry out. Lord, I'm your child. And when you roll back over, he said, I got your way out. I got your way. I got I got high five your neighbor telling him he made a way. He made a way. He made. You may have been set up. You may have been let down. You may have been through some stuff. But ain't you glad, and I know you was in bad ground, but ain't you glad that the Lord didn't forget about you? That he didn't leave you in your messed up state? That he didn't let the enemy get his hands all over you? That he didn't let that set up go the way it was supposed to go? And he brought you out of the midst of the mess and allows you to slip right out through the hands of your enemies. God bless you. God bless you. God keep you. It's my prayer. Set up. Let's slip down. There's a lot of you, hallelujah, that can they can relate to being set up. That was been riding you and riding you and it just it just doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem fair at all. You know it's all bad and you've been praying that it'd be all good. Can I submit to you today? That it was just a setup to get you here. Yeah. 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 That your struggles on Monday. That you're giving up on Friday. That you're fed up on Saturday. Was leading you to slip out on Sunday. If you're here and you've never made Jesus head of your life. If you don't know him as passionately as the young man of, of, of Reverend Wood, of Reverend Mills, hallelujah, was speaking of today. And you can honestly say that I don't know him. I've never confessed him to be head of my life. But I need that way out. I need that way he was talking about. I need to, I need to see that door, hallelujah. Well today, today that way has been made. Today that way have been explained and it's ever more clear, hallelujah, that Jesus, Jesus loved you enough to die for you so that you can take advantage, hallelujah, of this day and slip out of the setup. There's a second thing. You may have confessed Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, but you ain't been living like you. Nah. You've fallen for the setup and you've Instead of distancing yourself away from that, which keeps you locked in bottom, you still find interest in it. You're still comforted by it. And it's gotten you taking steps backwards versus forward. But might I submit to that? They always just set up to get you here. To give you the opportunity to get it right. And reestablish that relationship with Jesus. Thirdly, you may say, you know what? I've been going to churches and it hasn't been a fit. And I just figured God just didn't love me. So I stopped. But something told me to just come here today. I fallen for the setup and I just felt like, you know, it just wasn't for me. But today, 
today I felt something different. But I submit to you that Greater Emmanuel is a church, hallelujah, with only one standard. And that's building the kingdom of God one family at a time. Yeah. We stand as a church of love, following only that which God has told us to do. Yes. To love where we're at and let God handle the rest. So if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you want to make the Lord and Savior of your life today, it will be my honor to come and pray with you. Hallelujah. If you're in a backslidden state, meaning that you're saved, but you haven't been living like you've been saved, come on, it will be my honor to pray with you and get that reconnection. If you don't have a church home, but you want Greater Emmanuel to be your church home, whether this is your first time here, or you were here and left, don't matter to us. Only thing that matters to us is that we want to grow up in love. And we are love to grow up with you. The doors of the church are open. If you haven't made a Lord and Savior, I'll be honored to pray with you. If you're in a backslidden state, I'll be honored to pray with you. If you want to make greater man your church home, come on down right now. We'll be honored to have you. 